Carl Edwards reacts to being named one of NASCAR's 75 greatest drivers. Kyle Busch calls out Corey LaJoy. And Pitbull will name his upcoming studio album Track House. <laughs> How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Back home, hope your week is going well. I've got some awesome videos to share with y'all the next couple of days, next couple of weeks, honestly. But before we can get to that, before we get to the latest news today, let me tell you about a contest my friends at Joe's Hand Cleaner are putting on. Joe's Hand Cleaner is best known for their all-purpose waterless hand cleaner, their waterless hand scrub. But one of my personal favorite products are their hand and surface quick wipe complete with a refreshing cherry scent. They're giving away an awesome Joe's Hand Cleaner prize pack. Head to dailydownforce.com slash giveaway or click that top link down in the description below. It's super easy to enter. One grand prize winner will win a, a Joe's Hand Cleaner hoodie, a hat, Joe's Hand Cleaner surface wipes, some of their all-purpose hand cleaner, glass cleaner, hand armor. And NASCAR fans, you'll also receive a copy of the official NASCAR 75th magazine, as well as a Daily Downforce hat, t-shirt, and a one-year subscription to NASCAR Pole Position magazine. So there's a lot on the line for the grand prize winner. Once again, head to dailydownforce.com slash giveaway to enter. You only have three days. The contest ends April 27th. Thank you to Joe's Hand Cleaner for sponsoring this episode and sponsoring this awesome sweepstakes. Now let's get to the latest NASCAR news. Lots of positive, uplifting stories this morning. There is one feud that appears to be brewing. We'll get to that at the end. But first up, Alan Bestwick, legendary NASCAR motorsports broadcaster, is reuniting with ESPN to call Thursday Night Thunder this summer, the superstar racing experience. Here is the SRX's full TV talent lineup. Alan Bestwick returning as play-by-play, -play, reuniting with ESPN. Matt Yoakum there as the pit reporter. Joey Logano, NASCAR Cup Series champion, will serve as the guest color commentator for three races. Daryl Waltrip, NASCAR Hall of Famer, will be there for Thunder Road. And Connor Daly, IndyCar driver who was fantastic in the SRX booth last year, will also call a couple of races. Pretty great talent lineup, in my opinion. Looking forward to Thursday Night Thunder returning this summer. July 13th is the first race. Cool to see Joey Logano, an active Cup Series star, getting some uh, screen time. He's been great calling Xfinity Series races the past couple of years. Excited to see what he can do with the SRX. Good things all around. Uh, I am once again looking forward to uh, the SRX here in year three. It's going to look a bit different, but I really like the way their schedule is shaping up. I'm planning to attend the uh, race at Berlin later this summer, so should be a good time. Next story, and this one kind of came out of nowhere, but I think it's awesome. Pitbull, Mr. Worldwide himself, has a new studio album set to drop in July. And yesterday, he revealed that the album will be titled Track House. Love the album cover, artwork. Uh, I love that Track House continues to promote themselves, not just as a race team, a NASCAR team, but as a larger brand. Since its inception, that was one of Justin Marks' goals, one of the team's mission statements. Trackhouse continues to distinguish themselves from the other teams in the NASCAR garage. In fact, when I was at Martinsville a couple weeks ago, just walking through the garage, the two Trackhouse haulers now not only have little neon signs that say Trackhouse above their doors, they have plants, they have big posters of Daniel Suarez and Ross Chastain in very dramatic lighting. They have high top tables and bar stools set up. Now they even had video screens I saw next to the hauler door doors, showing highlights of track house racing cars. Very modern, very new, unlike anything I'd ever seen in a NASCAR Cup Series garage previously. They continue to stand out. Track house is more than just a race team. They're a brand. And uh, Pitbull titling his next album Track House is just the latest example of that mission statement coming to life. I also just love to see these you know, celebrity team owners like Pitbull or like Michael Jordan being so invested, not only financially, but personally into these race teams. Like Michael Jordan sat atop the pit box the entire race at Talladega this Sunday. And when the cameras would cut to him, he was into it, edge of his seat, talking to those around him, doing this with his hands. You, you know you're a race fan if you're talking like this. That's great, you'll love to see it. They're not just stamping their names, signing a few paychecks. No, they're present. They're invested both financially and emotionally into these race teams, into the success of these race teams, which you love to see. 
Next up, and it's always a special, special day when the one and only Carl Edwards emerges and speaks publicly to the NASCAR fan base. NASCAR continues to roll out their 75 greatest drivers of all time, and yesterday they named Carl Edwards to that list. Carl Edwards made a rare media appearance yesterday on Sirius XM NASCAR radio with Dave Moody, and here's just a little of what he said. And so today, Randy Fuller, sent me a text message he said hey there's going to be a, a daytona number that's going to call you at this time and you need to answer it and i thought oh man this is this is cool it was lisa kennedy lisa called me and she has been a friend of mine since i was racing in capital speedway at the dirt track sure. and for her to deliver that news to me i sat down with my wife afterwards and i thought how fortunate am i to have done something that i love and to have met so many great people and every day my life right now, even though I'm not racing, is positively impacted from my time with NASCAR. And so, yes, I just feel so grateful. Carl Edwards, a 28-time Cup Series winner, an Xfinity Series champion, easily one of the 75 greatest drivers in NASCAR history. Very humble sounding there. No idea what Carl Edwards' plans are. I don't even know explicitly what NASCAR's plans are, but what I do know is Carl Edwards deserves to be recognized as one of NASCAR's 75 greatest drivers. And it was pretty cool to hear from him directly how big of an honor this is for him, even though he, again, has not really been around the sport in any form or fashion since his retirement at the end of 2016. Those were all the fun, feel-good stories I wanted to react to this morning, but we gotta finish with one more topic, a little more controversial. The story's a couple days old now, but I was out of town, didn't have a chance to react to it. I wanted to do so today. A week and a half ago at Martinsville, Corey LaJoy and Kyle Busch battling for about 20th went back and forth. Kyle Busch got into Corey LaJoy multiple times, and then Corey LaJoy seemed to retaliate by door slamming Kyle Busch down the straightaway. Last week, Corey LaJoy went on his podcast, Stacking Pennies, and explained his side of the story. But he drove into my left rear. Three different times, off the corner, boom. Like, looking to cut my tire down. Once, okay. Two, all right, dude, I'm sorry. Like, three, okay, mother <laughs> Come off four the next time, and he dro drove in there again four times over the span of, like, six laps, just driving there. So he gets to my door, and I just yank a left. Like, here's the thing. Don't drive it in my left rear and try to cut it down. Hmm. We'll come back to those comments in just a moment. But then this past weekend at Talladega, before he went on to win the race, Kyle Busch was asked about Corey LaJoy. And this is what Kyle said. He's been a pain in the nuts to race with and pass for years, just coming up and lapping him, things like that. Every time I'm around him, it's like he tries an extra 20% harder to make sure I stay behind him. Some colorful language there from Kyle Busch. Then he brought up a point that I've seen others bring up the past couple of days. Busch said, LaJoy slammed down into me down the front stretch. He admitted it on his podcast that he wanted to crash me and create a yellow, and he didn't get penalized even though Denny Hamlin did. Again, our consistent inconsistency is impeccable. Mm, so Kyle Busch uh, clearly frustrated with NASCAR officials choosing not to penalize Corey LaJoy. After a couple weeks ago, they docked Denny Hamlin 25 points and $50,000. Kyle Busch is asking, where's the consistency? We are currently at a point where I believe some NASCAR drivers honestly don't know where the line is. What can they do? What shouldn't be crossed? But I personally believe most of the drivers do know where that line is, even if they don't want to publicly admit it. Kyle Busch, though, seems to be unclear. So let's unpack this for a moment. Yes, Corey LaJoy, it sounded like, admitted on his podcast that he intentionally door slammed Kyle Busch. It was retaliation for Busch getting into him. Denny Hamlin, a few weeks ago after Phoenix, admitted that he ran into Ross Chastain on purpose. It was retaliation for the many times Chastain had gotten into him previously. So what is... The difference between the two incidents. Why penalty for Hamlin? Why no penalty for LaJoy? I think it is a fair question to ask. However, there are some very clear differences. Denny Hamlin retaliated against Ross Chastain for something that had happened weeks, if not months ago. The two had not gotten into each other during that race at Phoenix, to anyone's knowledge. Uh, most recently, I guess, Ross had spun Hamlin out at the clash a few weeks earlier. But truly, their feud goes back to last year, last summer, almost a year ago now. Some may say the uh, statute of limitations had already run out when Hamlin finally decided to retaliate at Phoenix the way he did. Corey LaJoy retaliated against Kyle Busch for something that had just happened in that race, just a couple of laps previously. He'd been getting run into, run into, run into, so finally he just said, okay, I'm gonna turn left and we're gonna bang doors. Retaliating right then and there, heat of the moment, 
is different than retaliating kind of out of the blue for something you'd been frustrated with for months. I'm not saying one is better or worse than the other, I'm just saying there's a difference. I'm looking at this from NASCAR's perspective. Why they penalized Hamlin, not LaJoy, I think that was a difference they cared about. There is also some differences between the wrecks themselves. Corey LaJoy bangs doors with Kyle Busch down the straightaway at NASCAR's shortest oval besides the clash. I don't think either driver even lost any positions. Meanwhile, Denny Hamlin ran Ross Chastain into the fence, causing them both to lose 10 plus positions. I know Chastain then brake checked Hamlin afterwards and they lost even more, but the initial move by Hamlin cost them both probably 10 positions. And I said this before, but I think part of the reason NASCAR reacted to Hamlin's comments and Hamlin's move is because during that incident at Phoenix, Denny Hamlin was no longer trying to get the best finish possible for his team. He said so on his podcast. He felt like he was going to go backwards anyways. He wanted Ross Chastain to finish in the back with him. Hamlin was no longer trying to truly, genuinely advance his position, at least if his comments on his podcast are to be believed. He had accepted defeat and he wanted Ross Chastain to suffer with him. In the case of Corey LaJoy, Kyle Busch, no, they were still racing for position. Again, I don't think they lost any positions banging doors like that. Very different. Again, this is just me trying to explain how NASCAR may view the two incidents. NASCAR's philosophy is let the drivers police themselves. It's not good for NASCAR to then penalize drivers who do police themselves. Like the Denny Hamlin Ross Chastain deal at Phoenix was not egregious in my opinion. It wasn't like a dangerous crash. Denny Hamlin made a good point. The Phoenix deal didn't even bring out a caution. <laughs> the Corey LaJoy, Kyle Busch deal at Martinsville, no penalty was warranted whatsoever. And Kyle Busch, pretending there that he doesn't understand where the line is. Why was Hamlin penalized, but LaJoy not? I don't see the difference. I think Kyle Busch is being kind of disingenuous there. I think he's trying to make a point. He's, a, he's frustrated with Corey LaJoy. He's not a fan of LaJoy's move. But I think Kyle Busch and I think the vast majority of drivers in the NASCAR Cup Series have a pretty good idea of where the line is. There are certain little retaliatory moves you can make in the moment that I think every driver knows is, is okay. You can't right rear hook someone, certainly not at a fast track. You can't let go of the wheel and wreck yourself along with your competitor. You can't obviously spin out intentionally to bring out a caution. Those are three obvious things that I think every driver is pretty clear you can't do. So, you know, some drivers want to say that the line isn't clear, it's very blurred. I don't actually think that's the case. I think most drivers can kind of tell when something crosses the line versus when it doesn't. Fans watching at home though, I'd like to know, do you have a, a good understanding of where that line is? Do you think Corey LaJoy should have been penalized for hitting Kyle Busch and then admitting he hit Kyle Busch on his podcast? Or do you believe that incident was different enough than the Hamlin Ross Chastain deal from Phoenix? Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. It helps the channel out a ton. And if you love NASCAR and you're new, you found the right place. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And thank you as always to my Patreon supporters as well for your very generous support. Again, head to dailydownforce.com slash giveaway. Link is down in the description. It's the very first link. Enter the Joe's Hand Cleaner slash Daily Downforce giveaway. Lots of exciting videos coming to this channel very, very soon. Lots of cool things in the can that I'm working on editing right now. Busy, but uh, fun busy. I uh, can't wait to share. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Have a wonderful rest of your afternoon.